Hey there, everyone. My name is Sydney Rico. I'm an intern with the Global Collab Network, and I'm here with coral expert and conservationist Gerald Thompson. Um, he's going to answer a few questions for us about conservation, um, his background, and his work with corals in the natural world and, con and conserving Florida's wild wildlife. So first off, Gerald, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and be sure to include your favorite reef fish or coral or organism on the reef. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've lived in Florida my whole life. I was born and raised at this place called Sarasota, and Sarasota is home to Moat Aquarium. So I got to intern with Moat in high school, and that led to me getting a summer job for them at their coral reef laboratory in the Keys while I was getting my marine biology degree. And so I was leading summer camps there, which is how I met you, Sydney, and uh, just kind of fell in love with coral reef conservation and all the really cool stuff happening around preserving the reefs. Um, my favorite coral that's really easy, it's this coral called pillar coral, Dendrogyra cylindris. Um, when I was getting Florida Master Naturalist certified in college, we had to make an outreach presentation. And most of my classmates did the bare minimum, like they made a little pamphlet or something about like keep the beaches clean. But I was just really jazzed about this coral that week for whatever reason. And so I made an entire video uh, between Fort Lauderdale and down the Keys about pillar coral and how endangered it was, just trying to make people more aware of it. I was kind of sad that it was so critically endangered and hardly anybody heard of it. So I just wanted to make kind of an awareness video honoring the species. So that's by far my favorite. That is spectacular. It's an amazing story. Um, thank you for making that video just first off and for the conservation work that you've done. Um, so we'll jump into some more questions. Um, what are some strides being taken by conservationists that give you hope for the future of our reefs? Yeah, so there's a lot of really cool breakthroughs happening every single year. So one I think is pretty cool that Mo in the Keys has been doing for a little while is they're kind of selectively breeding the corals. So they're one of the only places in the world that can breed the corals in lab, grow them, uh, fragment them, and put them all on the reef, all happening in the same facility. And it's really important to keep the genetics straight because you don't want interbreeding corals that can lead to a lot of genetic problems. But they can also test for resiliency to things like climate change. So they have some really high-tech gear that can change the pH of the water the corals are living in, can change the temperature, and it's not just for today's conditions, it's conditions for 10 years from now, for 25 years from now, for 100 years from now. So they're making sure those corals, for every criteria they can think of, are going to survive on the reef. And so what they can do once they identify those strains is actually breed those resistant strains together. So you have one that's resistant to ocean acidification, one that's resistant to disease, one that's resistant to warming oceans, and combine them all together and you get quote unquote super corals that should be resistant to a lot of the problems we're creating to at least keep the reef alive until we come up with solutions. That's crazy fascinating. Um, I was amazing to witness that system um, happening to kind of learn about it from you, Gerald, and the experts at Moat. Um, and I don't know, I have every confidence that that's going to make a huge impact on just the future of corals and, and how, and just kind of the hope that we can have for coral reefs in the future as like, to, to be able to continue. Um, so we'll jump into, into another question. Um, what is one change that people listening right now can make to benefit our troubled reefs? There's so many. So there's like small everyday changes. There's, you know, using less single use plastics. Um, plastics affect not just the coral from entanglement and from ingesting the plastic, but also all the other creatures on the reef as well. There's uh, trying to curb your emissions as much as possible to try and slow climate change as much as we can. Wherever you can't curb, try and offset in whatever ways you 
can. Um, of trying to eat sustainable seafood. People aren't really aware a lot of the ways we get our seafood um, is often really just destructive and it's not gonna work for long periods of time into the future. So just making sure that the species you're eating and how they're being caught are as sustainable as possible, that's a huge effect on the reef. So those are small changes, but there's also just the big one that I like to preach is just educate yourself, be aware. Um, I think being underwater, corals kind of suffer from an out of, out of sight, out of mind mentality. So, you know, expand your horizons and learn about these corals. You can be in Kansas and healthy coral reefs still affect your quality of life. So make sure that you know those issues, you know what you can do, and then you're buying products that are supportive of healthy oceans. You're voting for political candidates that are supportive of healthy oceans. Everything like that, just making yourself aware. Absolutely. So wherever you are, you can be making an impact. And wherever you are, you could be impacted by our coral reefs not being in the best shape. So you need to do something. So educate yourself. Definitely appreciate it. Okay. Um, and last but not least, um, you take and share breathtaking photos of the underwater world and Florida wildlife. What is the message surrounding conservation that you hope to accompany your content? Well, thanks for saying that. Um, kind of in the same vein, I see a lot of people coming to Florida, whether on vacation or living here, that aren't familiar with one, the animals we have, and two, the conservation issues they're facing. So besides just being a fun way for me to share my experience, I want people to become more aware so in their day-to-day -day lives they'll be more cognizant, they'll be on the lookout because once you know what to look for and you know what's around you, you become almost hyper aware of things. You notice things so much more. So, and that's something everyone can do especially here in Florida, nature is for everybody. Anybody can be an environmentalist. And so that's why I hope to share with my pictures is that just everybody can appreciate the nature around them, um, whether it's bugs or plants or birds or cute cuddly things, everything's important. And every single person has the experience or has the chance, the opportunity to be able to make an impact on it. Absolutely, that's a very powerful and definitely impactful message, um, which I appreciate. So um, do you have any social media channels where I know where you post your photos um, or any like profiles that you want people to be able to reach you at or maybe reach out to you? you yeah, if people want to follow me uh, on Instagram is where I post these pictures. It's at Gerald Saves Florida, all one word. That's, I post a picture every day with a different theme, just about some type of Florida wildlife. So if you'd like to follow me, that would be really cool. I'd appreciate it. So. All right, perfect. We'll include um, your username in the video when it's posted places. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for talking to me today, Gerald. Um, I hope that our viewers got a really um, important message about what they can do to help corals um, and understanding of the situation that Coral's in and just how conservation needs to be handled on the whole. So thank you for being here today. Yep, thanks, Sydney.